Right, let's start with our next project. We have a brand new kit. We have the Even VCO. This is the version 0 0.3.3, .3, which I think is the latest version. I've already had a look on their website before I bought it and downloaded PDFs. So I've got all the assembly manual and all the rest of it, which I uh, presume is actually in the bag. But also there's a temperature stability upgrade, which I found. Mine obviously is version 0 0.3.3, .3, so it's that last one in this red square. And there's a couple of interesting points on there. I've done a little bit of work beforehand and double checked things. And I've checked all of the various swap out components on here and they already seem to be in this kit. I feel I'm good to go basically. The whole build includes the temperature stability upgrade as is. So let's have a look at the kit. We have the build instructions. The build assembly instructions I assume is in order of build. So they start with resistors. The ones here that I've marked with the pink next to it is basically the ones that are mentioned in the upgrade. So I'm gonna start resistors and my rule of thumb is to start with the highest quantity, which is the same order here. It's easier to identify because there's a lot of them. I'm gonna double check with multimeter, but this actual PDF guide is brilliant because they also include the codes as well as the values and the quantities. They make it quite easy to identify. So there's 10 100K resistors and they're identified by stripes of brown, black, black, orange, brown. And then there's all the names on the PCB. Main board bag A. So that would be that one then. So that's the resistors and open up main board bag A. I have no idea if any of these are marked. It looks as though they're not. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So we've got ten, and then we've got two, four, six, seven. So let's put them to one side for further investigation. I'm gonna double check with a multimeter these first resistors should be 100K. So let's go to 200K. And let's test one of these. We've got 99.9, .9, so that's all good. And these ones should be 10K. Nine point nine four. That's good to go. Main PCB, which is the one with the square cut from it. Let's start with the ten resistors, and they need to go into R sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, etc., etc. Right. So let's start with resistor sixteen. So that's the first 10 resistors in. Now let's solder them in and then move on to the next resistors.
So that's the first wave of resistors done. We'll just give them a quick run through with the jeweler's loop. So far all those solder joints actually look quite good. So let's move on to the next resistors. Get the multimeter out. These should be 10K 9.90. Let's put these in really for soldering. So let's solder them ones in. Next on the instructions, we've got the four resistors. So these should be 22K, 22, there you go, 21.9. Solder them down. So now we move on to the next components. These should be 1K. Solder those on. That's all of the fairly, well, the unique numbered uh, resistors. Now we move into stuff where there's duplicates well not duplicates but there's many of the same number so we have to identify the components Solder those ones in. I've been through the remaining resistors left in the kit. There's, I think, 16 of them. I'm going to put all these parts in now, solder them in, and we're done with all the resistors and we can move on to the diodes.
So now the resistors are finished, let's move on to the diodes. We've got six 1N4148. On to the next diodes, which are 1N5817 diodes. Those seem to be okay. Next up. There's two small ferrite beads. So next on the instructions are the ICs. Now obviously this is working with silicon chips. Some people will say you have to wear anti-static wristbands. I've grounded myself on the back of a piece of equipment that's plugged into the mains. So I don't need to worry too much. The static electricity issue with electronics is basically a jump in potential. So I've grounded myself to the back of a computer. So these have been sitting in um, anti-static bags. So I assume that their potential is also very, very low. So there isn't a massive jump between me touching them and their current state. These are all eight leg IC chips. The main thing is you want to get a cut out. There's a little cut out at one end. You want to make sure they face the same end on the circuit board. All the cutouts face the same direction. The first one is IC4. Then we have IC5 here, IC6 is there. IC7 and then C3, IC2 is at the very, very top. We need to actually place the uh, IC chips now. We need to identify them first of all. The first one is IC4, which is an LM393. Let's check down the bottom. Just double check that. It's an LM393. And that goes into IC4. And I bet now that I've soldered it, I can't see it. Oh no, there it is. IC4. Groove is to the left, the cut out on the IC chip is to the left. They look good. That was a little bit more dramatic than I would have hoped for, but it's in there now. <laughs> now we've got uh, three TL072s. face where's the cut out on these ones can't see a cut out on these ones the dots to the left bottom so I assume that's pin one I'll leave them out for a sec and move on so LF412 is what these should be LF412, LF412. Now these have got a hint. And this is um, this is general rule of thumb for me. The reason I've left them out, because I don't know the orientation. There's no cut out, I'm not sure. I'm assuming that that little dent in the left hand corner is pin one. Fortunately, the next chips we're gonna put in has also got that dent and the cut is also 
Well, you can't, can't. I was just giving us indication that it's to the left of those chips. So let's put those two in, IC2 and IC3, which are bound to be these top two. IC2, IC3. So now we know that little spot on the chip is the bottom left hand side so that's pin one must be so on these that goes to the left so sometimes you just if you're not sure sometimes it's a good idea to put it to one side and see if you can get any clues um, from similar components as to orientation because the biggest thing for me, the biggest scare is orientation. You get something around the wrong way and you basically you can blow it up and melt it and you get the magic blue smoke. But So that's the IC chips done. So now we move on to the uh, main board bag B, which has got, by the looks of it, all the capacitors and a few headers. So yeah, let's crack on, shall we? So the first thing I noticed with the bag B is there are 11 capacitors which I've already opened the bag and these were loose and they do say on them 104 which corresponds to the instructions so first of all we've got C2, C4 and C5 Solder all of them down. So next we move on to the next batch of capacitors. There's two groups of three. So we have those three and we also have these three. So in the instructions, the ones that have got 102 are the next ones. These ones, according to the instructions, have a marking of 10J. These just have a marking of 10 because the other ones are marked 102 and they correspond. These ones are 10J. And then we move on to the other three. Let's solder all that a lot on. Next we have the 680N capacitors. So I assume that's 680 uh, nanofarad. The code on the instruction is 68J63. The only component I can find close is these ones, which are 68K63. So we're gonna assume they're the correct components. These are not polarized as far as I'm aware. We've also got another two, which are ceramic capacitors, 47P. Let's solder them in. So next we have two single capacitors, 
one is two point well the value both of the values are the same but they are different so we have two of them there's a red one and a one uh, white one the white one has got 2n2k100 so that's the next one the other one is 2200 and marked red so this one the 2n2k100 is c21 i assume the polarity is not important We move on to the electrolytic capacitors. We have two of those. They're going to 14, C14 and C16. The polarity is quite obvious. That's the electrolytic capacitors. Next we move on to transistors. We have three 2N3904s and obviously we have to get these the uh, correct way round. We have the 2N3906. We have two single transistors left. So we've got to work out which one's which. This one is the LM336, which is the, the next one. So this one must be the 2N3906. The 2N3906, that's correct. That's T2 on the board. And the last one is the LM336. Next we move on to trimmers. Two 10K, which I believe to be these, because there's two of them. And the only other trim I can find is that one, which I think is the next one on the list which is a 1k trimmer and it says in brackets blue on the board they're named ref underscore adj solder the trimmers onto the bcb where the silk screen indicates with the screw facing out from the edge of the pcb solder them in that's the trimmers done next up we got the uh, the mail headers two sets of mail headers eight pins and ten pins which go into main a100 and main b100 a100 this is that one. And we have main B100. They're going to be a bit tricky to solder because I'm not sure how I'm going to support them. A bit of uh, masking tape. that will hold it in place for what we need to do we have a connection which is main A We've got a power connector goes into power which will be that one
from next, we move on to the uh, control PCB, which is the other printed circuit board. So moving on to control board bag A. First of all, we've got four resistors. Fortunately, this bag is quite easy because a lot of the resistors are fairly good groups. We've got a group of four, we've got a group of three, a couple of twos, and then four ones. So it's quite easy to uh, work these out. So starting off, we've got the 1K resistors, four of them. Then we move on to the next section. So the next one is 100K resistors, three of them. Might as well put in the next resistors, which are 3.3K and there's two of them. The next two, which are 10K. And we solder them. Next we have four single resistors. We have a 50K brown background Dow 502B. We have two brown background down 103 Bs. Next, we move on to diodes D100 and D101. Black or white line on the diode, which indicates the cathode negative side must match the white line on the diode symbol on the PCB so on the PCB the white line is that side and then we have the last capacitors which are marked 102 and 104 So now we have uh, a trimmer, which apparently on here, it's soldered here where it says in it. So we only have one trimmer. Then place the female pin headers over the silk screen markings at position two main A and two main B and solder. Now we need spacers. Secure the spacers onto control PCB through the two holes with silver outlines that one and that one with the main body of the spacer on the component side and not on the opposite front panel components mount tips now we We'll proceed to mount mechanical components. This part of the assembly is critical. Please take your time and read the following instructions carefully. 
These components must not be soldered until they are placed on the PCB and fully attached to the front panel. Place all the mini jacks into the PCB, ensuring that they are on the silk screen side. But don't solder them yet. So the silk screen side is that side. Place the potentiometers, making sure they do not go all the way down. They need to be flat against the panel. Do not solder them in yet. And then the rotary switch obviously goes on as well. Which has got a hell of a lot of connections to it. That sits in there, which I assume is going to be quite a hard one to solder that one. Then once you put it all on, attach the front panel to get it all square. So with that, I'm assuming I'm going to have to get rid of that. That's in the way. Cut and remove the indicating lug. Oh yeah, it does actually say in the instructions, it's just I haven't read it. Now fit. That will all go on top. Marry everything up before we solder them down. Which is a lot of soldering left to do. What I might do is put a bit of tape around that, hold it all together. Throw all these nuts on. And just do them up hand tight. So let's do the last solder joints. Right, so I think the last job we've got is to do the uh, bit previous, which was the resistor uh, marked on the board as R115. In this particular version of the kit, there is no resistor put in, uh, to put in there, so you have to bridge it. Um, would have probably been easier to do it earlier, to be honest, but let's go in there and just bridge those now. So 
so yeah that's resistor 115 which is not part of this kit so we had to put that in and we are pretty much done now 